Greetings, Electrofogy here. One thing that a lot of people ask about is how do transistors amplify? That's a good question. And in order to answer that, first we have to say what is amplification? Well, the dictionary says that amplification is anything that makes something bigger or stronger or more powerful. And we all kind of know that that's what amplification means. I mean, when you turn on your amplifier on your stereo or whatever, it makes the music louder. But how exactly does it do that? Well, let's talk about amplification in general. There are many examples of amp amplification in nature all around us. Let's see how nature amplifies other things before we talk about transistors. This is a tractor. It's pretty heavy. I don't think I could lift it. However, you'll notice that I have it parked on a shovel, and the shovel is resting on a piece of steel. Now, the shovel and steel act as a lever and fulcrum. And as you can see, using this lever, I am able to easily lift the front of the tractor. So, this lever amplifies my strength. However, it doesn't amplify my power. Because as you'll notice, when I press down on the lever, a large amount of movement is required to move the tractor any great distance. So, I'm amplifying strength at the co cost of movement. With a lever, the power output of the system equals the power input. And we define mechanical power as force times displacement. And of course, by displacement, I mean the distance traveled. So, in a lever system, mechanical system like this, power output equals power input. The distance times force that I put in equals the distance and force coming out. But in this case, the distance that I input is large, but the force that I use is small. At the output, at the tractor wheel end, the force is very large, but the distance is small. So I'm able to easily lift the front of this tractor, but I can't lift it very far. I have a large force, but a small distance as the output. And this is how a lever system amplifies my strength. This is a snowblower. It has an engine and impeller blades in the front. And the way it operates is, we feed snow into the front and the impeller blades impart kinetic energy to the snow and throw it through the chute at the top and the snow goes flying for about 10 or 15 meters into a pile far away from my driveway, which is the whole point. We can think of this snowblower as a pump for snow. The pump adds energy to the snow and it sort of amplifies the snow, you could say. So, we can consider a pump to be a type of amplification. Now really what it's doing is adding energy, but a lot of times amplification is the addition of energy. So, we can say that a pump is a type of amplifier. In my town, there is a water tower. It holds literally millions of liters of water, and the weight of that water pressing down is several thousand tons of mass bearing down on the town, and this water tower supplies the town with water. Now that's a lot of force to be reckoned with. But in my house, I have these faucets, and with the faucets, I'm able to control this weight of water and do useful things with it. So here's the thing. With just the pressure of two fingers, I am able to control thousands of tons of water force and allow it to do useful work. So, just the effort of my two fingers can control thousands of tons of effort. This is amplification. A valve is an amplifier. Using a small force, I'm able to control a larger one and do useful things with it. Valve is an amplifier. This is a bicycle. Its pedals drive a sprocket, and the sprocket drives a chain, which transfers power to the sprockets at the rear wheels. 
Now by varying the gear ratios of the two sprockets at the pedals and the rear wheel, I'm able to adjust my gear ratio. And that means if I'm going up a hill, I can gear down so that my legs can put in a lot of effort with a little bit of force. And at the rear wheel, I get a lot of force, but with very little distance. So by spinning my cranks uphill, I'm able to propel my 100 kilo body up that hill with very little effort, just a lot of spinning. So we can look upon this bicycle as kind of a lever. Power output equals power input. I'm putting a lot of distance traveled, but with little force at the pedals. And at the rear wheel, I'm getting a rather small amount of distance, but a large amount of force. And I know there's going to be friction losses here, but don't worry about that. I use a very good chain lube. This is a car. This car weighs about a ton and a half. Now in this car, on the driver's side, on the right side of the compartment, is a long skinny pedal called the accelerator pedal. When I press down on this pedal, it causes the ton and a half car to go faster. Now, is this a lever, or a pump, or a valve? Well, if it was a lever, I would expect to see, linked up to this pedal, a series of actual levers and fulcrums and pulleys and sprockets and chains and whatnot connected to the wheels, so that when I press the pedal with my toe, it causes the wheels to go around. Well, that may be true in a child's pedal car, but anybody who knows about automobiles knows that this is not what makes the car go forward. Underneath the hood or bonnet of this car is an engine, and the engine produces power. And when I press my foot on the pedal, just the pressure of one toe can make this engine rev up, power up, speed up, and cause the car to go faster. So this acts as a valve. And in fact, on older cars, if you looked at the top of the engine, you would actually see a valve there. And when you press the gas pedal down, the valve opens, allowing more fuel-air mixture into the engine, causing it to speed up and causing the car to speed up. Nowadays, of course, the uh, accelerator pedal is more of a switch connected to the car's computer, which regulates the amount of fuel delivered by the injectors to each cylinder, but it still operates in the manner of a valve. The pressure of my toe is controlling a larger force underneath the hood of the car, and this causes the car to accelerate. Small input pressure, large output power. And that's the definition of amplification. Small effort from my toe creates increased power. So this valve, this pedal, is an amplifier. Now the brakes on a car used to be a lever. You'd press on the pedal and either a system of cables or a system of hydraulics would act on the brakes pads and it would stop the car. However, with today's power-assisted brakes, it uses the power of the vacuum from the engine to actuate the master cylinder and the car brakes, so these days it's more of a valve. However, don't worry, in case that valve system fails, there is a backup hydraulic system, at least there was after 1967, so if you've got a newer car, the brake system is pretty much a valve. This is a magnifying lens. The magnifying lens gathers a large area of weak light and concentrates it into a small area of powerful light. So you can see that the power output is equal to the power input. The power input is spread out weak light. The power output is concentrated strong light. Can you see where I'm going with this? That's right. A lens is sort of a lever for light. And that's true of a convex lens as well. You can put in a certain amount of light, and the amount of light on a convex lens is spread out even more widely, and it's less powerful. So the lens effect works both ways for any lens. 
A lens is a lever, but a magnifying lens can be considered to be an amplifier because the output is a small amount of strong light, and more powerful light is the desired result in this case. This is a window. Outside this window is the sun. The sun is an average star, and it puts out about 400 trillion trillion watts in total. Now that's a lot of power. However, this window has a window shade, and with just the effort of two fingers, I am able to pull the shade and control the power of the sun. Sorry. Anyway, this window shade acts as a valve for light, and with just the effort of two fingers, I am able to control the power of 400 trillion trillion watts. Now that's amplification by anybody's book. This window shade is an amplifier. Now I'm not sure how you would define a pump for light. I suppose that any kind of light bulb would be a light pump. I mean, by turning on an external electric power source, I'm able to cause this light bulb to generate light. It's just like pumping light out of the light bulb. So I guess any kind of light bulb or light producing thing would be a pump for light. And I mean, let's face it, the word laser is an acronym which stands for light amplification through stimulated emission of radiation. So there you go, light amplification, laser. I guess that's a perfect definition right there. So we've explored amplification in nature, but how does the transistor amplify? Well, let's ask ourselves, is it a lever? Well, no. The transistor is not a lever. A transformer is a lever. In a transformer, power output equals power input. You feed in a certain signal at a certain voltage and current, and the output is going to be either a higher voltage with lower current, or a lower voltage with higher current capacity. Power out equals power in, so a transformer is kind of like a lever for electronics. Is the transistor a pump? A lot of people think it is, because that's the way a lot of people talk about amplifiers. They say, well, well you know, it's a transistor is just, you know, an amplifier. And a lot of people think that that's the way a transistor works. You just feed the electrons into the base and they go blasting out of the collector like snow through a snowblower chute. But that's not the case. A transistor is not a pump. There's not a little turbine inside there that's shooting off electrons. The transistor is a valve. The transistor is a valve. Transistors were initially created to take the place of vacuum tubes. And everybody calls vacuum tubes valves. To this day, you'll hear old musicians say, yeah, there's nothing like a 1968 Marshall valve stack. And they're right. But still, the mechanism of a transistor is that of a valve. In order for a transistor to amplify, it has to have an external source of power nearby that it can regulate. So you have a tiny signal going into a transistor and it controls the output of this external power source just like the engine of an automobile. So that's why in order for a transistor to work, you have to have some kind of either actual power supply or a battery that can generate energy that the transistor regulates. And the transistor creates a stronger signal from these power sources that's regulated by the input. And that's what a transistor does and that's what it's for. The transistor amplifies by means of being a valve for electrons. So I hope that helps you a little bit in understanding what a transistor is and what it does. I'll explain a few more things later on, but for now, thanks for watching.
This is a tractor. It's pretty heavy. I don't think I could lift it. Although, let's see. Hmm. Scott's way! 